Hello. Can y'all tell me in the chat if you can see and hear me? I'm going to give it a couple more minutes and see if a few people are able to make it. Oh, says there's four people. <laughs> if anyone could go into the chat and let me know if you can hear me okay, that would be super helpful. Oh, great, okay, sweet. They mentioned that hop in is a little bit buggy at times. So I appreciate you confirming that. I'm gonna go ahead and get started um, and I will share my screen. I'm really excited to hang with y'all today. Um, the way this is gonna work is I'm gonna present um, this presentation and we'll do some Q and A at the end um, to go over anything specific that y'all wanna talk about. Um, Hopin also has this feature where you can join with video. So if you have a couple different questions, we can go through them there. Um, but first I'll tell you a little bit about myself. So my name is Courtney. Um, I am a brand and product designer at Vox Media. I've been there since 2015. I've also been with Design Lab as a UX Academy mentor since 2015. Um, so I've really been learning alongside students as the curriculum has you know, changed and evolved and um, worked with many students who are switching careers, who have maybe graduated design school, but want a little bit more um, context and help around how to become a better UX designer. Um, and my, one of my focuses is on communication, which is kind of the root of this talk today. Um, so we'll be going over that a bit. And uh, just a random thing that I wanted to share, things that I'm working on right now. So right now I'm working on a couple of new podcasts for Vox.com. Um, so doing a lot of like brand visual design for that, the podcast tile art, and then the, the marketing assets for that. Um, I'm working on this thing called Concert Ad Manager, which is launching in four days um, for product design. So um, that has been an ongoing project for the better part of a year. It'll be a big launch for Vox Media. And then I've been working on some templates. So there's a lot of infrastructure work that happens in design teams, as some of y'all may know, and it's not the flashiest, but um, I'm particularly excited about this project because it will help us with um, more efficient processes and just help the team focus on the bigger initiatives. So with that said, um, the reason that we are talking about selling design solutions today is because I've learned on different teams, both in-house and in agencies, that just because your work is pixel perfect, it doesn't necessarily mean that people are gonna buy into your decisions. Um, I also think that it helps you develop better, better and stronger opinions. So as you start to vet your design decisions internally with other designers, with you know managers and stakeholders, you're gonna start anticipating a lot of questions, a lot of um, bumps in the road before they happen with a little bit more practice and, and with this kind of formula that I'm gonna go through today. Um, also helps build a lot of trust and ownership. So even if you're an entry level designer, you can use some of these tools to start to make the non-designers around you feel like they're really involved with the projects and, and they're gonna start to come to you more often for your um, expertise. And then improving processes. So the better you can talk about design work 
and the more efficiently you can communicate those decisions to project partners, both internally and externally, like if you're at an agency and you've got clients, the more your project and product managers are going to shift the processes in the design's favor, um, which is a learning process for everyone. And you can be a better teammate by um, helping make their job easier. Let's see. And the last thing that I want to mention for this and why it's important is because um, it's also applicable for any communication type. Like I think the title for this is selling your design solutions and that sounds very pitchy and very advertising, like, you know, this like sales extrovert type of mentality. Um, something that I've been talking with my teammates a lot about um, over the past year is different communication styles and how we can really leverage these types of thinking for folks who may not wanna get in front of a room and, you know, pitch their designs, um, to project partners for implementation. So that's kind of the lens I was thinking about this through. Um, okay, before you get started on any design work, you're gonna kind of do your research. You're gonna do your homework about why this project is happening. What is the point of it? What are the goals? And for those of you who are UX Academy students, you know that there are different goals that you think about. So there's technical, there's design, there's user goals, and then there's also business goals. One of the things that we don't really cover a whole lot is the business goal because it's gonna change depending on all of your projects. So the most important thing that I do first is I'll read the brief and supporting documentation. A lot of times when someone comes to a design team and they say, we need help with this and we wanna build this. They don't have all their ducks in a row. They're not gonna have 100% complete documentation 99% of the time because it's a learning process for everyone. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that project brief that you get and you're gonna say, okay, what is the purpose of this? What am I doing? Why am I doing it? And then you might get linked off to some random spreadsheets or you know, drafts of things that people, you know, other people on the team might have put together and they're not in that main brief, but it's just extra context. So I encourage you, look for those documents, find them and find the keywords and phrases that are in those. You're gonna need them later. Another thing I like to do, and sometimes I just do this in my head, um, depending on the project, but I'll rewrite a brief. So I'll read everything that I can, and then I'll take a step away from it. And what I'll do is I'll come back and I'll write notes about it. What do I remember? What stuck out to me? What questions do I have? And if I can't rewrite the brief or think about it in my head and really get a clear picture of what I'm doing, I know that it's incomplete and I'm gonna go back and ask questions. Um, many times projects will have big kickoff meetings and there might be 20 people in the meeting and it's this, this big thing and it's very important and you'll get a lot from that meeting. But what I want to kind of emphasize is that after that meeting is where the real work is. I want you and you can work with your manager or your project managers or other designers on this. Find, you know, the one to three people from that meeting who you can connect with in kind of like a back channel. Um, you can do this with your team, you can do it one-on-one, -on -one. but if you ask those questions about the brief to those folks, you're connecting with them, you're also starting to build some trust, working trust with them. You're going to make them feel really involved in the project, and as a designer, that's a really, really smart thing that you can do to help the, the project move a little bit more smoothly. Self-editing. So you are starting a project. You're building out some user flows. You're you're working on your wires. Um, you might be building a UI kit, like starting your prototypes in something like Adobe XD. And you're like, this doesn't totally make sense. Like, I'm not really sure that this is working. And we all have those moments in every single project. Um, so you know, you're iterating. You're you're trying to kind of convince yourself. Um, if it doesn't make sense to you and what you're being asked to do doesn't seem like the best fit for a solution, create a different one. Um, creating additional prototypes that, that haven't been asked for is one of the best ways to sell your design. So for example, if you're asked to build a really complicated FAQ page for an app and you say, yeah, well, 
the the process of getting there, like the user flow to the FAQ page makes a lot of sense, but this is so robust and it just seems like it would be easier for the users if there was like a tutorial, like an onboarding thing with some, some tool tips throughout the experience. I don't think that the user is gonna get everything they need from this one page. If you think that, create a prototype for it, sell it, say, here's what you asked for and here's what I'm going to recommend based on these goals and repeating some of those phrases from the brief. Um, the second thing is find weaknesses and present them. So something a little earlier in my career that I was a little afraid to do was showing the weak spots of the, the solutions that I was creating. I knew that, you know, if I was creating, let's say a landing page for an online conference and the call to action wasn't really clear, but that's where they asked for me to put it. And so I put it there and it, it made it work. I, I put another option in there that I thought worked better. Don't shy away from that little bit of discomfort in the process. Show the weaknesses, say, I'm not really sure that this is working and like, here's why, and here's how I'm gonna fix it. Um, the last thing that you can do is really just like anticipate feedback. So even early on, you know, if you're a junior designer and you're working with a full design team and you say, oh, we're gonna present these options, these solutions, but you know they don't really answer this business goal or they don't answer this user challenge that we saw in the research. Think about how that feedback is going to come at the end of these calls and, and really try and work them into your presentation. Talk about it, um, you know, use that project brief to your advantage as well. All right, the next thing is internal reviews. So like after you are done with like your first rounds and you've self-edited, maybe you're showing this work to the rest of the folks on your team. Um, maybe you have a design team of five designers. Maybe there's only one or two other designers. Keep in mind that the other designers on your team are, they have a lot of projects as well. They may be working on the same things as you, um, in a different capacity, or they may be on entirely different projects. Personally, for me, on the brand design team, we're all working on separate work. We might get paired up every once in a while, but but we kind of work on different projects. On the product team, we're all working on the same thing. That ad manager that I mentioned earlier is, is one of the bigger projects right now, and we're all very tuned into each other's work. But even with that said, when I show them, um, you know, one of my Jira tickets, like for a design sprint, and I'm like, hey, I need feedback on this. Like, which one should we go with? They're not gonna know or remember what I'm talking about. They've got a thousand things going on in their head. So what I do is I break it down to four points. I'll say, this is what I'm working on. This was the context for it, the goals for it. Here's the link to my prototypes. And this is precisely what I need feedback on. So if I'm like, I don't think this type hierarchy works. Um, can you take a look at this in particular? or I'm not really sure that, um, you know, this particular button type is appropriate for the screen. Can you take a look at that? Um, that way it gives people focus. The second thing that I think about when I'm presenting this and getting feedback from my teammates is, if I were to not be here tomorrow, you know, at work and just, you know, taking a day off or something, could they present this work for me? Like if push came to shove, am I explaining this in a way where we all have the shared knowledge and they could do this for me? If the answer is no, um, what I would suggest doing is presenting it again um, and like thinking about clarifying details that you can give your team members so that they can understand your work and give you really meaningful feedback and, and see if they can repeat what you're doing back to you. And um, that's a really good measure of whether you're explaining it well enough before you go to stakeholders. And then the last thing is iterating and following up. Um, I think with larger design teams in particular, following up with your coworkers is really important and builds a lot of trust um, and a lot of like excitement around your projects when you say, hey, this feedback was really meaningful. This is how I changed it based on that. And maybe even talking about how that could extend to other projects as well. All right, finally, 
stakeholder reviews. So I mentioned this a couple of times already, but really thinking about the brief um, and key phrases from that and kind of repeating that in your presentations can really help stakeholders remember what they asked for in the first place, but also feel like their opinions and, and the things that they asked for are being included in your explorations. If you have multiple solutions, give the recommendation for what you feel is strongest and talk about why. Talk about why other solutions may be really good, but not quite as good as the one you're recommending. Um, make sure that you're pointing to specific reasons. And then the last one is responding to feedback really clearly. So there are gonna be a lot of times, um, and I think this is really intimidating when you're a newer designer, where you get stakeholder feedback and they're really not happy with anything that you've presented. Maybe your entire team is behind it, leadership is going to bat for these design solutions that you've put together, but the project partner just isn't feeling it. And they're saying, hey, you know, these are the things we want to see changed in the next call. Um, when can you get these back to us? And that sort of thing. And that can be kind of disheartening, but what I wanna encourage y'all to do is respond to it really clearly really clearly and take some time to digest it too you don't have to respond back right away you can go to your design team you know your mentors your managers and say you know this is the feedback that i got this is my initial reaction to it how do you feel about that what do you think um, and kind of workshop a, a little bit you know you're not in it alone and and get some i don't know other perspective on how you can overcome that challenge. Um, think about the conversations too that you might have had outside of the project brief, you know, when you were getting clarification and connecting with some of those project partners in your back channels. Um, go to that too and try and come up with other solutions with those perspectives. And then finally, if you need to push back on feedback, um, make sure you do that. You know, I think especially with young designers you know you feel like you don't really have a seat at the table you're like oh i haven't really been here that long like i don't really understand the business goals like the back of my hand however you know you do have a lot of really good training and like design and and you know hierarchy and you know you know the user goals and you have these perspectives that the project partners don't necessarily have so especially with your team rallying behind you, you know, trust your own expertise, um, make sure that your project partners feel heard, but also let them know, um, you know, when their recommendations aren't going to work and show them why. All right, and then I think some of the takeaways from, from approaching talking about your designs this way um, are that, you're gonna improve your design team visibility um, by having stronger communication with all of your project partners. What you're gonna do is you're gonna kind of place yourself as a representative for the team, for the design organization. Um, I think something that a lot of design teams talk about is a mentality around working reactively versus proactively. Working reactively kind of means that your design team is like a service desk that people you know just go to when they want things done working proactively is the design team is kind of scoping out the work that they want to do um, based on design goals business goals and user goals so i think this kind of communication is really successful in help pushing that proactive mentality forward the second thing that it does is it really positions you when you practice these things as a key design partner so when external teams or or project part something you know related to design if they are saying that they need you know like design for a new podcast or if they have a new idea for a feature for one of your company's products they're going to come to you because they're going to remember oh they taught me a lot about design i'm not a designer i'm going to go to them with these questions and like see how we can work on these things together and then the last thing is just influencing larger goals from any level. I think any level of designer um, with any communication style, you know, whether you're really extroverted and you really like talking to project partners or you kind of just like, you know, laying low and like doing some work and calling it a day, um, you can have a lot of 
really impressive influence by practicing these things and really um really involving your project partners in your work. All right, that's it. Um, I'm going to take any questions that y'all have. Let me stop sharing. So I'm just looking at the chat now. What modalities besides slide decks have you found helpful for getting buy-in? It's a really good question. Thanks for that. Um, I think prototypes are really great. Um, and actually, I'm glad that you asked this because in a lot of job applications, it'll say, you know, do you have experience prototyping um, either with Adobe XD or any other programs? And I think that can be easily translated. And can you talk about your design decisions? Can you show people how it works? And can you communicate that in a few different ways? So like in meetings and follow up emails and Slack and that sort of thing. Hey, Courtney, are you taking questions now? Awesome. Want, um, can we have anybody kind of join the screen if they would like to share, share their video? Um, yeah. We can have you guys join the, join the table. Share, you, you click the little button up there. So we're going to add Cindy. Awesome. Okay. And Andrew, come on, hang out. Now you can ask your questions directly. Hello. Hi, I think I got everyone. Can awesome. you hear me? Yes, I can. Oh, perfect. Yes, I had a question. So when you mentioned about giving someone feedback uh, because they give you feedback that is not working, which I have had through group crits at times where I know something, it won't work. Uh, how do you politely prove that to them? I think that's the main question I would have. That's a really good one. Um, this actually happened to me last week. Um, and it was pretty tough because I kind of went through a couple of rounds of saying, hey, I totally hear where you're coming from. And um, these are things we took into consideration, but it's still not working. Um, it's still not very scalable, that sort of thing. Um, a couple of things you can point to. So one thing that comes up a lot is usability and accessibility. Um, Sometimes I will let best practices make decisions for me. So in one case where this was a long time ago, but we were having back and forth about like the color of a button. Um, both were, you know, past contrast tests with the text color and the background color, but one was definitely stronger than the other. And what we did was we kind of just pointed to the accessibility guidelines um, in that case um, to make that decision for us a little bit. So that's helpful. I think another thing that you can do, and this is something that I had to do last week, is bringing other folks into the conversation. So thinking about the challenge and, and what other parts of a project or a system of designs that it's going to affect. So if it's something with, you know, within your UI kit or something, you know, if if one change is made, it's going to impact a lot of other elements. So figure out who's working on those parts of the project and say, what do you think? You know, here are the different options. Um, tell me what your opinion is and why. And if you're on the same page and you want to both go back to the stakeholder and say, hey, we've we've looped more people into this and we had a discussion about it and we want to you know continue this conversation to push it forward. Um, I think, you know, since you've already talked with us previously, you can easily get them on board to uh, help the conversation. Yeah, I appreciate it. That really cleared it up. It gave me a idea. Oh, good. Great. Thank you. Uh, let's see. How do you create compelling presentation decks, showcase study, any platforms you recommend, templates as opposed to making a presentation deck from scratch? 
Um, I think for this, keeping it really minimal is my personal preference. And, you know, there's two different kinds of presentation decks. There's one that you might share in an actual presentation like this. And then there's one that you might email to folks after um, a, like a, a conversation that you don't actually get to present. So depending on the amount of content, um, I think templates are really great. I think a lot of companies are creating their own slide templates for internal use. So if you're working in-house, you're probably going to have those assets um, ready to go. But outside of that, I think slide templates um, online are, you know, they're fine. All right, we have four minutes left. Does anyone have any other questions or want to join the video panel? Ooh, we have someone on here. I think I did it. Okay. Hey. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, my name is Clarice. Um, thank you. That was really insightful. That was actually really, really helpful, your presentation. Um, my question is, um, I started volunteering for a nonprofit, and um, they asked for a complete redesign of a website, but they didn't really have a brief, and they didn't have much supporting documents, like you said, it was it was just kind of um, they were just kind of winging it to begin with. Um, so from that, uh, I was a little lost. Since I'm still a student, um, I was a little lost on where to start. Um, how can I how can I best um, basically clarify the objectives for the from the from the CEO from marketing, basically from the stakeholders to see what they really want to accomplish. This is really co uh, common. Um, this even happens to me at like a very media company. So something that I do if there is no project brief, but I know that there's a specific um, initiative underway is I will find my key stakeholders um, who are trying to lead this project and I'll just do one-on-one -on -one interviews with them. So I have a skeleton of a project brief and what I want answered from it. And I'll just build, you know, how you build user interviews. I'll do that, but for the project stakeholders. So I'll say, what are your main goals? What's your timeline? Um, what are some things that you want to see? What, you know, what sparked this idea? Um, what are some competitors that you really um, are, are looking to for, as, as guidance for what you want? Um, what are things that you don't want to see in this project? Um, and then I'll also ask them who else they think I should talk to that is not already on my list. And so I will piece together a brief from that. You create your own brief and then just make sure they agree with it so that when you're presenting the results, um, you make sure that you're seeing eye to eye. Exactly. And, awesome. you know, I think this is actually, you know, kind of low key, a really advantageous spot for you to be in because you're gonna become the project lead, like the project owner. Um, you know, you're kind of piecing this whole thing together and you've got a team of stakeholders, but because you're project managing it, like you're really gonna be overseeing the process. And sometimes as a designer, that can be really exciting um, because we don't often get those, you know, that perfect storm. So it is a really big challenge, but I think once you get through that initial part and getting all of that information, it'll be, you know, really fun to work on. Reassuring. Cool. Well, thank you all so much. This is really great. You have just about a minute here left um, and you'll be going over to networking really soon. And maybe you'll even find someone here today, but um, Thank you so much, Courtney. This was amazing. You're so insightful, and I really wish you good luck in the future. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you. All right, everyone, we'll head on over to networking. You've got two rounds of potential connections to make. See you there. See you also at the next sessions, too, in about 10 minutes. Thanks, y'all.